Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the latest installment of the Fireside Chat series that Cameron Yellen and myself, John Shacky, are doing as part of the Open Publishing Fest. Uh, today, I have uh, David Shotton and Silvio Proni, so from the Open Citations Project. Uh, they're co-directors. Uh, for those that are not familiar, Open Citations is an independent infrastructure organization that brings together uh, open bibliographic and citation data. Uh, so thank you both for joining. And uh, maybe we can just start with uh, what does that involve? What does being co-directors of open citations mean? And what, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? OK. Hi, John. Thank you for inviting us here. Uh, so a kind of easy and complex question at the same time. So. From a technical point of view, which I, I lead, um, running open citation means basically to maintain and run a physical infrastructure, meaning a server, a physical server, and to create and update software services that we provide for all in order to uh, ingesting new open citation and also query uh, these, these data by means of REST API, visual interfaces, uh, and so on. So we also care about the, the website, uh, uh, the, 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 all, all the tools that are uh, created for being used on the web, and so on. So this is the technical point of view, let's say, simply uh, speaking. And there is, of course, another big part in the story, which is, um, let's say, all the part that is related to uh, all the activities that concern uh, the outreach, like using social account and the blog to introduce the new services, uh, new researches we are doing on the topic, uh, other scholar, scholarly communication publication, like, I don't know, reports, articles, conference paper that we use to publish in journals or in presenting conferences and so on. And of course, one of the most important part, at least recently, is to engage with with potential supporters, uh, uh, coordinate activities with other partners in order to uh, run joint projects. Uh, so, and this part about, let's say, uh, the, the, the outreach um, thing is something that usually uh, David leads, even if honestly, we, we take part to all the activities of the others, because formally speaking, we are only two of us, so us, that we are really working on, on the whole thing right now. So uh, we, we try to do more or less all the things there. That's the idea. Sure, yeah. And David, I know um, you've had experience in many different fields. I, I currently am on the board of uh, Force 11. I know you've ser served Force 11 and other activities. So maybe we can just take a step back. Like, How did you get involved in Open Citations and in the project? Well, it's a, it's a long story. Um, I started off uh, in molecular biology, and uh, that's a, a good discipline because it's noted for its open data and its open software. Right from the early days, molecular biology led the way in being open science in many ways. Um, and uh, I, I spent my academic career as a cell biologist um, undertaking uh, microscopy studies on uh, using the electron microscope to study cell membranes. Indeed, I even had a year at Berkeley up the road from you, um, interestingly looking at red blood cells in a botany department. So uh, that's perhaps the most unusual <laughs> combination I've had. Um, and uh, being a microscopist, I was interested in images. And uh, at a certain stage, I got invited to uh, develop uh, or participate in the development of an image database for biologists, part of a European uh, Commission project, the Bioimage Database. And it was there I learned about metadata for the first time. Um, and it was all fine, except when we got to the end of the project. And then we discovered that uh, the commercial company who had been a partner in the project and supplied the database software wanted to charge us for continued use of the software. So I, I, I learned uh, uh, an early lesson never to build open services on commercial software. Uh, 
shortly after that, uh, I met Robert Stevens from Manchester and learned about uh, ontologies and the semantic web, a completely uh, new area for me. And uh, I, I became convinced that this was the way that we needed to go, that if we wanted to share information, share scientific data, we should uh, use semantic web technologies. And so we try to uh, re-implement the Biomesh database using um, what was then bleeding edge technologies, uh, Jenna and others from HP labs. Um, and uh, we learned there, again, the difficulties of, of building on very fresh uh, underlying software tools. Um, but it, it convinced me that semantic web was should go and we've employed that in uh, the uh, open citation software mm -hmm. yeah um silvio i don't know if you've ever told me um how did you get involved in open citations in the project and in the the idea of bibliometric data so it is a, a kind of uh good story at least for me uh, i was doing uh, my phd in computer science here at the university of bologna and um, my, fo my main focus was on the use of semantic web technologies in order to, uh, let's say, define document markup with a focus on scholarly documents. So it's exactly the application of semantic web to a document markup. Uh, and during my PhD, I had uh, basically, uh, I needed to go away abroad for six months in a research center outside the University of Bologna. It's a mandatory task I had to do for all, all the, the PhD students in computer science had to do. And uh, looking around on, on where I, I would like to do go, I sent a kind of up internal application to Oxford, a generic internal application to Oxford that arrived to David's desk somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, but somehow. And he invited me to join him for six months. And the idea was to, uh, originally at least, the, my, my specific task at the zoology department where David was working on in that period at the, in the University of Oxford was to, uh, let's say, use my skills with the uh, uh, analysis of market document or documents in general, because I had my master thesis also on uh, the mining of documents, in particular XML-based documents. And since he was starting to a project that was named uh, a GISC Open Citation Corpus Project, so it was a, a kind of important project in that period, uh, the idea was that I had to help in mining uh, data and metadata from scientific text. Then the funny thing is that I, I met David the very first time in his, in, in his lab in the Department of Zoology. And in the first day, he, he asked me, because I had some prior experience also in ontologies. I was uh, an intern for six months if, in 2008 in a, at the Knowledge Media Institute in Milton Keynes, which is a, a, a research center which is entirely dedicated on semantic web technologies. I worked a lot with ontologies there. And so David asked me if I could look at uh, an ontology that he uh, was developing, which he was named CITO, Citation Typing Ontology. And I remember that after the first day, we had a discussion about the ontology, about how we could re-engineer some of the parts of the ontology, how we could extend it, how we can modularize it, and so on. So we started the very first day to, to chat about something totally different from what was my goal, original goal when I was there. And so it's, we decided to, to, to start to develop, a, a, um, let's say, a, a collection of ontologies for describing the scholarly domain. That it is named now SPAR ontologies, which is something that we are using in open citations, of course. And I think that while I, uh, let's say, started to work on scholarly documents since my master thesis. But the very first time I started to look at citations and citation function was because of this work on the sparontologies, honestly. 
so that's how we uh, we met and how we started to work work together. We started in 2010, and we are still there working together. Yeah, yeah and so now there's this, um, you know, not only a project but now an organization, Open Citations. Yes. yes. Uh, and now you're you're co-directors, um, and I I mean it's trying to tackle a huge problem that we have in scholarly communications and in research in general. Um, so maybe uh, a little more information about your current roles and how, how that all got formalized. Well, it, it uh, was a long um, journey. Uh, again, as uh, Sylvia has suggested, uh, it started in 2008. I was invited because I was working with images, biological images, to give a, a, a talk at uh, a Wiley Blackwell Symposium held at the Royal Society in London. And the topic I chose for my talk was lively images. Uh, publishers who were going online seemed to delight in making static facsimiles of the printed page, which they presented as PDF documents. And I was convinced that the web had much more potential and that you could have images within figures that when you clicked on them turned into movies or you could mash up data within a paper with, with Google Maps or something like that. Um, but all the information I tried to put together for this talk was third party and not very good, I thought. So afterwards, I was asked to, to write this up as a paper and I thought, I can't just use these secondhand examples. We need to do something ourselves. So I pulled a document off the web the day after it was published from the Journal of Neglected Tropical Diseases, which is a PLOS journal, and, and decided that we would try and soup it up. And I, I had a very good colleague who, went, who came to work with me over the summer. And we tried a number of different semantic enhancements of this document and eventually we published it online, wrote a paper about it in PLOS Computational Biology. Um, and part of that was describing the citations, the, the, the references in the reference list of this paper according to the author's purpose in making that reference. And that was the birth of the citation typing ontology. How you, you, you cite another paper because you get data from it or because you want to acknowledge it went before or because it was one of your own earlier publications that you're building on. The various reasons you cite other people's work. So I drafted Cito and then Silvio came and took it apart and showed me how to do it properly. Um, and just about that time, I got funding from the GISC for uh, the development of an open citation database. We called it the Open Citations Corpus. We thought we could apply these principles and publish citation information openly um, in, a, in a way that wasn't readily available uh, elsewhere. Most citation uh, data came from proprietary databases for which uh, you had to pay a lot of money for access. And it, it occurred to me that it might be a very valuable service to the community if we could develop an open citation corpus. So we we built a prototype. I had good colleagues in Oxford. Um, Silvio was around at the time, but not part of that. And then, as he said, five years later, um, after our funding had run out and that original prototype had sort of ground to a standstill, I asked him, could he come and rejuvenate it? And indeed he did. And, and everything that has happened since then, I think, is thanks to his genius and, and technical skills. Um, and so we are now 10 years down the line um, and we have uh, a working uh, system. We have uh, over 700 million citations available online. And uh, we want to offer a genuine alternative to the proprietary uh, citation indexes that are costing universities so much money. Yeah, and I mean, you both have the, really changed the dialogue, especially in the last few years, um, bringing credibility to an open solution and um, showing what's possible 
not just through the technology, but also through the advocacy work that you do. So yeah. I know it's been a really big year for you. Um, last year, um, the SCOS program endorsed Open Citations as as one of the projects that they recommended investment in, which is a great seal of approval of the work that you're doing. And I know from previous discussions with both of you that you were looking for an institutional home for the project. And Silvio, you were able to get that at the University of Bologna. So, I mean, congratulations on both of those uh, successes last year and also with just the work that you're doing. Um, I don't know, Sylvia, do you have any uh, comments about kind of the process that it went through to well, get that kind of institutional support? Uh, well, let's say that SCOS was uh, perceived, at least from myself, from me, uh, as a, a really a reward. I mean, we, we started, I am. I was involved to work on a, on Open Citation since 2015 when David asked me to become a co-director of it, and so we started on uh, spare time on working on it because I, I have a position now, but I was uh, I had a position even at that time at the University of Bologna as assistant professor, and I had my courses I have to teach. Uh, so uh, I mean, running Open Citation was not the, the my my full time job. And is not, again, even now my full-time job. So it's something that I do because I got permission from uh, the university of doing it, but on, on the, the time that is out from the teaching, from the uh, exams and these kind of things. So I, I, I really perceive it, uh, these selections, this cost selection as a reward. And honestly, the fact that SCOS has selected us was even crucial in order to convince the university that this project has uh, uh, there is an opportunity behind it, and I think that the period the period was very good since the university itself started to work on some internal programs about open science, something that wasn't in place before. But in during these recent years, there is a specific need on working on open science topics, and the fact that the open citations uh, won this. Uh, SCOS uh, selection, let's say, uh, was a, a, a kind of argument that I, I used with the university and the university was very sympathetic about it. And they basically provided us uh, people uh, from the administration and for legal advisor that allowed us to set it up the documentations that is a kind of nightmare for me. I mean, I don't know how to deal with it. Uh, I, I didn't know before the, this experience, at least. So a lot of administrative people, uh, uh, legal advisor that allow us to create this new research center that is named Research Center for Open Scholarly Metadata within the Department of Classical Philology and Italian Studies, that, which is where I work. And this new center is basically the, the, the administrative uh, response, I have administrative responsibility in terms of managing the money for open citation, but still open citation still is an open infrastructure and it is governed by uh, an advisory board which comes from the community. So it's not something internal to the university in its governance, let's say. Um, and honestly, this wasn't possible without the people from the University of Bologna. I mean, they started to believe in the project since the very beginning. When we started in 2015 to set it up the first new uh, instance of the corpus, I asked it to the, my department if they can provide computers for doing that. And they did it without even asking anything about it. And we didn't have any budget at that time. So it was really something out of the blue. And uh, then we, we were lucky to, to, want some, win, to, to win some grants from the Sloan Foundation first and then the Wellcome Trust that allowed us to expand the infrastructure with new machines, with some people working on specific aspects uh, of the software we are developing and so on. But still, it, it was run until past year like a research project, really. The SCOS selection, we hope that that will change everything. I mean, uh, we would like to have people uh, working on it, not because there is a research grant on it, but because there are people hired 
for doing that. And it is something that we hope will happen in the next uh, in, the, in the next years. That's the idea. Yeah, it's a great story of, um, I mean, both of you as researchers identifying a problem and then, you know, applying your passion to it. And then institutions like the University of Bologna really believing in it, giving it a home. And then the community through SCOS supporting it would be a great success. That's mm -hmm. it's really, it's a great model. It's, it's actually a, what we in the Skullcoms community talk about a lot is what we would hope is that it comes from researchers and then built and becomes part of the scholarly infrastructure. But I mean, what you guys are working on, it's um, very ambitious, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, there's a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> and um, I mean, it, I'm sure there's still a lot of work to do, right? I mean, it's, um, it's, it's never ending as you were saying. So I don't, uh, I don't know, maybe some highlights about the next things that you have on your plate, the next steps. Silvio, do you want to talk about Meta? Yeah. So uh, uh, we 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 are we are now since a few years we have started a new uh, specific database which we call Open Citation Indexes, which contains citation links basically between DOI entities that are identified by DOIs. The main part of this data is coming from uh, Crossref data. And uh, uh, and currently we have 700 million citations stored there. Uh, the idea is in the next years, months, hopefully, to uh, uh, increase this amount of citation data by uh, including and consider additional sources that are already open open for being ingested. Something we are currently working on. But there is a new data set that we are trying to implement right now, which is Open Citation Meta, which in principle will contain also the metadata of the citing and cited entities that we are storing in the citations links. So the, currently the indexes that we have only contains really the link between the citations. So like DOI cites another DOI. But we have no information stored in our data set about all the, 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 the entities that are involved in citation. And we rely on external services for uh, getting this uh, metadata on the fly when requested. For instance, we, we use a lot the, the, the Crossref API for getting the metadata they, they, they store. We use the Unpaywall API for getting information about open access version of the uh, uh, paper in, in, that we are considering and so on and so forth. So this activity works very well, but it is also a bit um, slow, let's say, because we have to rely on external services. So we have to make calls to external services. The idea here is to have an internal database with metadata in order to not to do external queries. So to uh, try to speed up all our APIs in terms of metadata re re requests. And this is the first thing. But the additional thing is that having a, a full system that allow us to store citation links and metadata allow us also to increase the coverage. I'm working in a humanities department right now. And humanities and social science in general are uh, one of the domain which is uh, is not caring a lot, at least in, in the commercial the databases that are available about the citation links. So it's underestimated, let's say, in terms of citation links in available in the open domain or even in the commercial, uh, in the commercial data sets. But they are important because they the citation allow us to track how science evolves in time, basically. And so the aim that we have is to kind of increase the coverage that we have of the domains of the disciplines that we are dealing with in order to provide open databases that can be uh, uh, increased with the information citation information citation data coming from any discipline including humanities and social sciences and this would be possible only if we get help so someone institution will provide us data they have about these informations about books ancient books these kind of things for instance so open citation meta will allow us to store also this information 
by following a metadata model that we have developed that we call open citation data model, which is uh, the standard way we use for storing this information in our, uh, in our system. And I think the, the important thing to emphasize here is that uh, these indexes that uh, we've developed are possible because of a new way of thinking about citations. Previously, we thought about citations as the link between a citing paper and a cited paper, just as the link. But now we think about the citation as a data entity in its own right. And we've developed an identifier, as you know, from Pidapalooza. You're wearing your Pidapalooza shirt today. Um, we have launched the open citation identifier, which is the equivalent for a citation uh, of a DOI for a document. So you can cite, you can re reference, you can identify an individual citation with its accompanying metadata um, and from there you can find links to the information about the citing and the cited documents which will be held uh, in meta. Um, so the, it's, it's a sort of um, a shift in perspective which had very um, beneficial consequences in our developments. Yeah, I mean, it's there's so much work to be done here. I mean, it's amazing this, also the rapid pace that you guys are working under. Um, you know, every time we have another conversation, there's another set of features and ideas that you're coming at. Um, uh, it just feels like you know there's there is a lot that needs to be done. So I mean, I think it's great that there's this endorsement that's come through, and that there's some funding and some resourcing that's hopefully going to come from the community to help support this. Um, and another another point I, I would like to add here, because it, I think it is very important, because we don't only need data, but also we, we need help also with, with the software. So the idea that we had since the beginning is that we have to build everything on open source software, and whatever we would develop for open citation will be open source, and this is useful for two reasons. First, because we can get feedback from developers. And it already happened. I mean, the software that I've developed recently to uh, re-engineer the, the, the Open Citation Index part, I, it is available on GitHub in, uh, we, by using open source licenses. And there are a bunch of developers that have helped me without asking about help, honestly, to improve some parts in order to speed it up. So it works. It's, uh, let's say, a, 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 the open source development process is something that works if you put something there people that are interested in it will help you and the point another an additional point is that if you provide open source software the point is that you provide all the community with a tool to replicate exactly similar things in their own environment so it's something also that allow you to kind of preserve uh, what you are doing in the future? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that yeah, really it really shows that you're you're delivering something of value too. That people are finding it and interested in optimizing it. Yeah. And the, the other point about being open and and everything we do is open is that if Silvio and I go under two separate buses tomorrow, everything can be taken and re-implemented at, at uh, University of California or anywhere else, and and nothing will have changed. Um, in in terms of the services already available. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the things I end up having conversations about a lot is around sustainability of projects. And I think that's a very underappreciated aspect of open projects, which is um, you know, the fact that the sustainability, the, the project can move on and as it adds value, it will move on to anywhere it needs to add value because people, it, through open licensing and through collaborations are creating connections and the more connections you create, the more sustainable the project becomes over time. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a great, great model of how we in the entire research and information space can work together. And also, I mean, the work that you're doing to me seems like it has a lot of crossover to the work that happens in libraries just traditionally. And so as you're opening up for more and more collaborations, through the Meta Project and others, um, 
there's just a lot that we can um, maybe we can see with collaborations between your team and and libraries as well. Yes, ex exactly. We have we have ongoing conversation right now with libraries, with a bunch of libraries, not only in Italy, which is easy. I mean, I, I live here, so but also in Europe in general. Even the, the I mean the the California digital libraries. We had a lot a lot of chats before about how to 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 collaborate, and of course also li libraries in the humanities that have this problem of they don't have way for storing citation for referring to ancient book because there is no item for ancient book and ancient book doesn't have a doi so you have to provide something different for identify it store it in a proper way within a database and uh, we are trying to to run joint project with libraries because of of that in order to extend the coverage this is a kind of important thing to do and so one of the plans is also to develop in the future interfaces so visual interfaces that allow web interfaces that allow a librarian we with no specific skills on semantic web technologies to interact with our data that are fully semantic web uh, data in order to extend the coverage of the data itself themselves so uh, this is something we want to develop and uh, hopefully uh, we will be able to do that because of the of of the SCOS selection that, in principle, will allow will allow, uh, will allow us to hire people exactly for working on that. Mm, be great. So um, we're coming to the end. I I don't know if either one of you have any parting words or anything you'd like to leave the the community with. David, you are you are muted. I think. You are still muted. I don't know how that happened. I don't know. Okay. Okay. There you go. Got the right one. Sorry. Um, no problem. First of all, thanks to to all those many many people who have developed the open software, the open semantic web standards, all the things that we we rely on without thinking from day to day to build our systems, and thanks to people like Crossref and PubMed Central who provide open bibliographic data that we use to source our citations. Secondly, and you've hinted at it already, John, um, we have learned that you can't run open infrastructures like open citations on the money that you receive for project grants. Project grants are designed for projects and um, they are not designed to support infrastructures. And therefore, we are delighted that SCOS has um, funded us, uh, or not funded us, but chosen us, and we are absolutely delighted that the French government, their open science office, have chosen to give us a very substantial amount of money um, in support of, of SCOS. Um, if our services and our data are of genuine worth to the community, then it is essential that the community realizes that it has to contribute to the support and the, the uh, long-term sustainability of infrastructures such as open citations. And um, spread across many donors, the amount per institution is really very small compared to the amount it's already paying for commercial uh, access to citation indexes, for example. Um, we need to hire people to put in place the, these ideas that we have to take open citations forward. And the way that that can happen is that individuals and institutions um, can support open citations financially. They can become members of open citations and as such, they can partake in the governance and the future direction 
of open citations by coming by becoming members of our council and our advisory board and so we would encourage people to do that um, our, our new slogan is open citations for open science so i think i'll leave you with that yeah and i i have felt that um the closed citation graphs and the the usage of those by institutions and research projects is something that um, is one of the main problems that we have in our space and something that is definitely achievable for us to overcome. So I mean, I would just wanna thank both of you for ch being champions of the idea and then also building a reality that we can all rally around. So thank you both for the time um, that you took today to chat with me. And again, thank you for the work that you do. So. Yeah, Take thank care. You. Thank you for the invitation, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, and so thank you everybody for joining the Fireside Chat. There'll be one um, final wrap up tomorrow. So join um, Cameron Nalen and I when we talk to the organizers of the Open Publishing Fest. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, we are off. Thank you.